Welcome to the Online Course Master Show, where we learn from the best online course creators how to better create and sell our very own courses. I'm your host, Phil Ebener, and today I have the pleasure of chatting with Ravinder Deal, who teaches courses on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Visit OnlineCourseMasters.com for show notes to watch the video version of this episode and see an archive of all our past guests. Please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you're listening, and make sure to leave a rating. Help us get our first 100 ratings so I can know whether to keep making this show or not. Let's get straight on to the interview. For people who don't know about you, can you talk a little bit about your background and what you were doing before you started creating online courses and your online business? Okay, so before really, um, well initially, um, I used to have like an Indian food business because um, that's kind of a family route. It's kind of from India and stuff. Um, and I had an Indian sweets and snack business, um, which, you know, it, it, did, it did like kind of fit, fit, fairly well, kind of had it in like three coffee shops um, around here. So, you know, it was all right. Um, but that was And were you really cook- well- making the, the food yourself? Uh, some of them, some of them I could make, um, some of them kind of, kind of get them from other people, um, that we knew who made them. Um, but yeah, there's, there's just so much variety, um, especially in the sweets and stuff, there's so much sugar. Um, but yeah, there's so much variety. It's hard to kind of learn everything. Um, but yeah, so you yeah, initially started off by doing that. Um, and then through that, I got uh, the opportunity to go to like India with kind of Virgin and like meet Sir Richard Branson and stuff like that, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and that kind of kind of really spurred my interest to kind of do other things in terms of building an online business. Um, because food business, I mean, it's great, but it's kind of, it's, it's, it was offline. Um, but my interest was always in building kind of an online business. Um, cause that's where my strengths kind of lied more. Um, so yeah, started off by that. Um, I worked, I did some kind of project work with a company um, where they did kind of blended learning. It was a financial company. Um, so I helped them kind of deploy that blended learning to kind of people who were looking to get back into work after losing their job. Um, and that's where the interest of Bitcoin came in because I heard about Bitcoin while I was kind of doing that project work for that financial company. Um, and yeah, and then I came across Udemy um, and then I started putting a course together for it. So that's how it kind of evolved really, kind of a short kind of condensed kind of version of how it got to where kind of I started publishing courses on Udemy and other platforms. Nice. So you teach courses about Bitcoin. Is that yeah. what all of your courses are about? Yeah. So so kind of up until, let's say, late last year, um, it was mainly just all Bitcoin courses so up until late 2016. Uh, but now I've started going kind of going into other areas such as cryptocurrencies and um, blockchain courses um, and stuff like that. and kind of expanding out and going to the next logical area which my audience are interested in. So rather than going in a completely different kind of area where my audience wouldn't have any interest in, um, I'm going into an area which is kind of, let's say, a, a sprout of Bitcoin, which my audience have an interest in. So I've got an audience built up now and those that audience, those audience members are interested in these kind of areas that I'm moving into. Um, so yeah, as a next logical step after kind of Bitcoin courses and stuff like that. That's super smart. And that's something I've heard a lot from the people I've been interviewing that, you know, you should start off with some subject that you're passionate about or you you know about and start building an audience around that topic, but then ultimately be able to expand to other topics that are somewhat related um, because you can't. Well, some people make a full time income off of one topic or one Mm -hmm. course, but it seems like the Udemy game is about creating lots of courses and so finding one sort of area but also expanding into similar topics is good. But I want to back up to this whole topic of Bitcoin because it's so interesting and it's been all over the news lately because the value of Bitcoin has been increasing, but it's confusing. And to me and to I think a lot of people, can you kind of break down just what what is Bitcoin? And then you talked about cryptocurrencies and these other yeah. blockchain, I think you mentioned. Can you kind yeah. of break these things down for us? So, I mean, there's there's a lot of cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, I mean, I've got an app on my phone, so I'll quickly show you. Um, yeah. And if anyone's interested in cryptocurrencies, uh, it's a good app to download um, if I can find it. Uh, so the app is Coin Market Cap. So the, you can see there's not just Bitcoin. Hopefully they can see that there's not just Bitcoin and those currencies. There's like literally hundreds if I scroll okay. through. Yeah. Um, but the most valuable is kind of you're talking Bitcoin um, and Ethereum, the top two. Um, so yeah, that app was Coin Cap if people are interested. But yeah, so I'm creating courses on kind of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum. 
And the easiest way to kind of look at Bitcoin um, as an example um, is just internet money. Um, it's just like the simplest way. But the, the, this, it's kind of hard to understand because Bitcoins physically don't exist. So even if you have Bitcoins in your wallet, on, on your online wallet, they're not actually there. Like You can't actually just go and get something in exchange in terms of, let's say, ages ago. I mean, a long, long time ago, you could go, and, go into a bank and give some of your money and get, theoretically, a piece of gold right. um, as it was connected to that. Um, but with Bitcoin, it's all based on kind of mathematics and the blockchain kind of keeps the, um, it's the ledger. So it keeps kind of track of what's in people's wallets. And, you know, it, it gets very complex very quickly. Yeah, um, it sounds but, like it. And that's why a course is good, because if you need to explain the entire process it takes an entire course to do so so with so who's controlling this though who created this and who is making sure that there's only because i i was reading an article recently about how i'm brand new to this so something like there's only 21 million or something bitcoins that will ever be created like who came up with this idea and how is it being managed uh so there's there's a name going or the name is that the the creator of Bitcoin is Satoshi Nakamoto, um, but the person's never actually been identified as to okay that's the person that created it. You're the person that owns Bitcoin, manages it. Um, th there've been kind of allegations of people that found people with the same name or they found one person with the same name, um, but kind of denied that he's the creator. Um, so you can say that there's not one specific person that manages Bitcoin, which is kind of the key. USP of Bitcoin, the unique selling point that is decentralized um, and it's not controlled by one single entity. It's controlled by the community. It's kind of like a peer to peer currency. Mm. Um, it's controlled by its users, by the nodes um, that manage the Bitcoin network. Um, and then, of course, you've got miners who create the Bitcoins. Um, so it's like kind of the whole ecosystem. It's a real peer to peer uh, cryptocurrency and not one single entity, um, private or public can control the whole network or just enough of the network to gain the majority control. Okay, so it's starting to make a little bit of sense. And yeah. and before we start talking about <laughs> actually the courses, I want one more question. So how does someone like me get a Bitcoin or a, a part of a Bitcoin? Um, super easy now. Um, I mean, it used to be hard. I mean, you're talking maybe even just like two years ago, three years ago, it used to be pretty difficult. And there wasn't much help online in terms of how to buy uh, bitcoins but uh, you've got to sites like uh, coinbase which is perhaps one of the most popular sites um input your details and you'll buy you'll get a bitcoin within 10 minutes um, and you can set up a wallet on that website as well um, so coinbase is perhaps the easiest way uh, personally i use a site called bitilicious uh funny name um and uh, i think they're only based in the uk they do operate in some other countries but um you just put your website wallet addresses are into the website how many bitcoins you want to buy um, and then you go into your online banking transfer the money to that person's account and it's all managed um, on the website so it's super secure as soon as they receive the money you get your bitcoins um, so it's really easy to buy now you can buy with credit cards and so on crazy crazy and how did you learn about all this stuff um, so yeah uh, back to when I mentioned when I was in kind of the kind of the project work with this company um, in the finance field um, I heard across I heard about Bitcoin from someone who was working there um, and then just kind of got really interested in this kind of essentially new kind of world online where people are kind of buying like spending digital currency which really doesn't exist um, and kind of what really piqued my interest was kind of when Bitcoin's price shot up back um, a few years ago over a thousand dollars and that's when it kind of went a little bit more kind of mainstream let's say and more people started to hear about it and we started getting blogs up here um, but yeah that's how it kind of piqued my interest I read the white paper the bitcoin white paper um, and I think that's where a lot of people started they read the white paper um, and they've just gone through blogs uh, reading people's opinions um, and other kind of experts in the field and seeing what they had to say so it's kind of a my course is a kind of uh, let's say a mixture of all that knowledge that I've gained over the years um, of kind of getting to know bitcoin and then helping people to learn about it within, let's say, five to six hours rather than what I did a kind of over a few years. Right, right. Well, it seems perfect. And when you started, were, were there other courses? You started on Udemy, right? Yeah, that's right. Were, were there other courses on Bitcoin or how did you see what was the market like for these types of co courses in the okay, beginning? Uh, 
So when you should actually initially I started by teaching uh, live face to face classes, uh, just small groups uh, in and around my local area um, with people that I knew. Um, and then I took it online to Udemy and there wasn't that much kind of, let's say, competition in terms of the courses on there. Um, there are a few courses on there, but they weren't as in depth um, and they kind of kind of jumped all over the place rather than having a logical structure. OK, you start from here, you get a wallet and everything, buy some Bitcoin, sell some Bitcoins. This is how you do it. Um, so I didn't really have that much competition when I started. Of course, there's more competition now, um, but my audience has grown with that competition and I've got a lot more courses in that area. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I, di I didn't have that much kind of resistance when launching. But then at the same time, there wasn't that much interest mm -hmm. um, when I launched my Bitcoin course um, of people wanting to learn about it. So it's kind of a double-edged sword and it took a while to build that audience um to get to this stage where people are actually interested and really want to learn about it got it so i want to jump fast forward a little bit and this is usually the most exciting part about uh for online about online courses for the listeners and can you talk about what has where are you now how how has creating online courses and your business online changed your life if you want to dive into any sort of general income or specific yeah. income we'd love to hear Okay, uh, well, um, in terms of how it's changed my life, I'd say it gives me a lot more freedom, um, which I'm sure it gives a lot of other people who have online businesses in general. Um, you know, I'm, st I'm still kind of working every day, kind of updating courses, writing out new courses, filming, but it gives me a lot more freedom over my schedule, um, what I choose to produce. Um, so, I mean, that's the kind of thing with me in terms of I prefer to have kind of, let's say, a product business or a digital product business over kind of a service business because I like making my own things and producing my own things. It's just that satisfaction from starting with nothing and then by the end of you created this thing um, that people can use and get value from. Um, so that's the kind of that's how it's kind of helped me in kind of my, like the free in terms of freedom um, and being able to choose what I want to create is the main thing, really, in terms of freedom. Um, and then, of course, with income, uh, I, don't, I don't really share too much about income. Uh, yeah, online. That's maybe, that's, maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just like a British thing. I don't know. Um, I'm, I find it super interesting like, how people like share their income online and things that it's brilliant. Um, and I find it really interesting, like going through it and stuff. Uh, maybe you one day. Yeah, no, you don't have to feel pressured to share yeah, any no, income. No, no, no. Yeah, but but, um, but, but, com but comfortably um, every month um, over four figures, well, four figures every month comfortably. Yeah. And is this what you're doing full time now? Are you doing other jobs too? Or are you making most of your income from online courses? Uh, most of my income comes from online courses. Um, I do do a, a few other things such as investing in Bitcoin, but that's for the long term. Uh, I'm not kind of the person that kind of day trades and all that kind of stuff. Um, more long term investing. Um, and if I get a few kind of, let's say, freelance projects come up, I'll take them on. Um, but the majority of my income um, is through kind of creating these online courses focused on cryptocurrencies and the blockchain. Got it. And is this all coming from Udemy right now or do you have your courses other plat uh, on other platforms? Uh, so the majority of it is coming from Udemy. Um, Skillshare, I haven't had much success with, but I haven't devoted that much time to it. Um, so Udemy at the moment and kind of this year, so 2017, I'm looking at kind of putting my courses onto other platforms as well. Um, cause I'm sure many course creators will be thinking, okay, if Udemy just went away overnight, which it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't happen, but it's always something on the back of my mind anyway. Um, if this revenue stream did die down, what else is there to kind of replace the income or sustain the income, uh, levels? I mean, it wouldn't happen, but like I said, it's always something on the back of your mind, which I think is a good thing to have as it helps you kind of expand and go into other areas rather than just staying in one marketplace. Totally. I think that's very important for new course creators to recognize that these markets are so new. Udemy has only been around for five, six years yeah. in the form that it is now. And I always, it's scary, but I always kind of think, well, it's probably, I think like maybe it is going to be gone in three months or six months yeah. or a year. Obviously, I would love if it lasted for a decade or two decades yeah. and we maintained our courses and kept making income from them, but uh, expanding our income streams and having more control of our income through things like self-hosting or coming up uh, with other different Definitely. ways on our own platforms is, is important. Is that something you're, you're interested in doing too, putting your courses on your own platform or coming up with any sort of programs off of Udemy or these marketplaces? 
Yeah, so definitely that's kind of the main focus of kind of 2017 is kind of expanding kind of where my courses are online. Um, so one thing I'm looking at doing, I mean, my website will be updated recently, um, soon. Um, I want to get my courses on there, but I don't want to just kind of just put the courses on their separate courses. So I might be looking into bundles or stuff like that because the courses are already as separate courses on Udemy. Um, so maybe if someone wanted the set one course, go and buy on Udemy, but if they wanted a bundle, uh, maybe come to my site or something like that. Um, so I'm kind of looking at different avenues in which way I can deploy that. Um, but that's something I'm definitely looking into kind of having the courses on my own platform. Nice. All right, let's take a step backwards and talk about equipment. Yeah. One of the most popular requests yeah. I get is what's the best microphone? What's the yeah. best camera? But everyone uses something different, it seems like, and there's yeah. so many options. What are you using and have you have you in invested in better equipment throughout your time? And w what did you start with and what are you using now? Um, so uh, I'll start by what I initially started with. And that was um, I had a camcorder. Um, I had a microphone, which I kind of, it's, it's such an awkward setup, um, is a camcorder, uh, had some kind of pillows for kind of soundproofing, um, a microphone, which I had to plug into the laptop and then sync the sound. Um, and the workflow was just, got, just really complicated. Not comp it was kind of complicated. It, it just took a lot of time. So once you film it, it's kind of, you got to sync it all together. And personally, I like the most straightforward or the simplest workflow to get the thing created. Um, so kind of as the courses kind of took off, I got more students through, um, I started investing that back into equipment. Um, so right now I've got a Rode NT USB microphone, um, which I think is brilliant. Um, I think it's about the same price as the Blue Yeti microphone, which a lot of people use, but I found that far too sensitive. Um, so I've got the Rode NT USB and I've got it on like a boom pole kind of stand um, on the desk. Um, I've got soundproofing uh, around the room, uh, but just around the corners. Um, of the room uh, around the top and um, so kind of that stops the sound I mean they're relatively cheap you get a box of like 28 but it was like oh, about 20 pounds so maybe at like 25 30 dollars and I've got like a roller um, I'm not sure it's here it's called like a newer brand um, I'm not sure if it's like a cat is it a cowboy brand um, yeah that we have both newer and cowboy yeah. oh okay on yeah so so I've got that it's just a single one um, it's not falling down yet so I did a good job sticking it up um, and I've just got a grey backdrop. Um, and then for the lighting, I used to have a three point lighting setup, um, but I have quite a small room to kind of film in. So I got rid of the three point lighting setup and I have a ring light and then just a backlight, which I find works really well. Um, yeah, and, and it good. Saves, saves so much space um, and it gets you get a nice kind of effect in the eyes and stuff. Um, and in terms of a camera, um, I have Canon 80D. Um, I used to have a T3i, um, I remember I messaged you, uh, about it before, um, and it's just kind of getting the focus right. So with the A2D and the 70D as well, you said, um, it just automatically focuses. Um, so you stand there, it's focused, which is brilliant. Um, and then I've got a Rode Video Mic Pro, uh, attached to that for better sound. Um, and that's about it other than a Parrot teleprompter, um, which I think is brilliant. Um, cause then it just, it just saves a lot of time once again, when you're filming and recording, um, I mean, they do look pretty small when people see them on like the YouTube videos and stuff. Um, but if you're under, let's say, let's say four to five feet away. So if you're within four to five feet, um, it's brilliant. Like you can read it perfectly. Um, no issues at all. Um, so that's my kind of setup, really. Um, nice. Just kind of a really simple kind of workflow, um, which produces a lot better quality than, it pre than I previously did. Yeah, well, it looks and sounds really good for people who are just listening to this on iTunes or wherever. You can actually watch the video version of this episode at onlinecoursemasters.com and you'll get an archive of all of our other lessons. And so you can see Rob there with his cool backdrop. I really like that backdrop. And yeah. so did you, is that a, what is that? Is that that's actually? Just a, that's just the wallpaper. Wallpaper. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So previously, um, if like if anyone sees one of my old courses, I used to have like a brick effect. Um, it was like a red brick effect, and then I changed it because it just kind of looked a bit too dark, and that's kind of looks like kind of wood, um, kind of wood panels, um, but it's just the wallpaper. Yeah, it's got a cool kind of style. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, he mentioned the Canon 80D, and I have the 70D. There, there. I would say for YouTubers or course creators probably the best and the the best camera for the price uh, you can yeah. get be better cameras for more expensive and you can get cheaper cameras but the autofocus on that camera is yeah. what really makes it stand out it has face tracking 
And so, and it has the articulating screen, so you can flip the screen around and yeah. see yourself and co yeah. compose yourself. So awesome. And yes. one question about the light you have, yeah. the, the ring light, is it yeah. a specific model? Did you just go on Amazon and find um, it? Or? It's actually a newer ring light. Okay. Um, so it's the same kind of brand. Um, I'm not sure what kind of uh, kind of size it is in terms of the diameter, um, but it's a large one. Um, so the camera can, when I put the when I'm filming, the camera goes through the middle. Um, nice. So it's so kind of you've got the ring light that goes through the middle, um, and yeah, it's perfect. But yeah, I, I like the thing like you mentioned about with the kind of the flip screen on the cameras. Um, I think that's super important uh, because I when I had a Canon after the kind of the camcorder I had um, I think it was a Canon T2 or T2i um and that didn't have the kind of the flip screen so it's like you're filming you look at it and like you're half your head's out the shot <laughs> yeah. uh, so then you've got to film it again uh so yeah it's super, super handy to have all of that kind of autofocus and all of that yeah i i played that game running back and forth behind the camera <laughs> and checking it out and so we're we're working by ourselves most of the time yeah. so we need to get equipment that works for that and so you mentioned the teleprompter and this is another debate between online course creators is should you script or not i've been for a long time i've never scripted but the more i create courses and the more i create courses with friends of mine i started doing that it takes a long time sometimes if we don't have a script yeah. and so are you always scripting your courses now or are you just bullet pointing outlining them or what what are you what are uh, you doing now so right now uh, i'm scripting all of the courses right from the first lecture right to the last um and then i like you said there's a debate going on whether you should or you shouldn't whether you should know all of it off by heart. I mean, I'm not an actor. I mean, I'm not Robert De Niro, so I'm not going to know my script off by heart. Not meant to be actors. Um, we're kind of teaching the topic. Uh, and by writing it, I mean, I feel that I can get so much more across um, in kind of the perfect time. So rather than a lecture going on for 15 minutes, I can get everything across to them in, let's say, eight minutes. Um, all the key facts that they want, um, everything that they need. Um, and then I think some people do look at kind of scripting sometimes as kind of a waste of time because it takes ages. Uh, but what you've got to remember is that you can also turn that script then into kind of an ebook if you wanted to. Um, so it doesn't just have to have to sit there. Um, it can be turned into an ebook and everything else. And it helps with editing as well. Um, so you know exactly what word you've said next or whatever, and you know where to find uh, which bit you've got to cut and so on. Yeah, I think I support, I would agree in support scripting it takes a little bit of work to yeah. speak more naturally yeah. what if you're reading a script yeah. so that takes a little bit of practice and you don't want to come off robotic mm -hmm. or it, you don't want to seem like you're just reading off yeah. a paper but you, it's going to save so much time yeah. editing wise yeah. and I, I love that idea of turning it into an ebook or even just yeah. including it as a download within yeah. your course there's a lot of people who would uh, benefit from that do you have any other advice for course creators in terms of course creation structuring a course uh, any mistakes you've made and learned okay. from uh in terms of let's go back to scripting for a moment um one thing i would say is kind of write the way you talk um, so instead of writing very formally kind of like you're writing a letter to someone or something or um, just write as you would talk um, that's what I found works well for me I'd write conversationally it might not be grammatically correct um, but it sounds fine when I'm saying it to someone or speaking um, so that's what I found helps when I'm scripting um, in terms of other advice um, have the most kind of straightforward and simplest workflow you can um, because there's a lot of aspects kind of course creation editing kind of setting up the camera the lights especially when you have to put it all back down again um, stuff like that just have kind of the simplest workflow you can which i think really helps um in terms of when you're kind of setting up to go filming rather than thinking oh, i've got to film tomorrow i've got to set all this up um literally i just put the ring light up put the back light up roll the roller down um, and i'm ready to go um it's just such a simple workflow um so those will be kind of two really important things um like i said scripting helps um and just kind of investing kind of quality um over kind of quantity i mean your course doesn't have to be 10 hours long if it doesn't have to be it could be three hours long um but yeah definitely one thing i found like going forward now more important people are a lot more interested in kind of quality of courses um and having a much better learning experience um rather than just watching a powerpoint for like three hours oh yeah oh yeah and then the name of the game online especially on the marketplaces is to get good reviews so you want to make sure that 
especially your fir- the first part of your course is very condensed and packed with with learning and skills and uh, really benefiting the students yeah. so that when they do choose to review that class, they, they give yeah. it a nice review. In terms of structuring a, your course outline or introducing your class and coming up with an outline for the actual lessons, do you have any sort of process you use or tips for a great course structure? Okay, um, so let's say I'll give an example. Let's say my uh, complete Bitcoin course that teaches people how to get started with Bitcoin. Um, that's kind of structured in a way in which you would um, start as a new Bitcoin user. So you'd learn about the basics first, then you'd go and set up a wallet. So straight away in the first section, well, in the updated course, which is coming out very soon, um, you'll be setting up a wallet in the first section. Second section, you'll be buying Bitcoins. So just kind of make every section revolve around kind of a practical activity, um, which I think really helps because you're kind of working towards something then rather than just taking in knowledge that you never, you're not really going to use straight away. Um, so you're structuring around practical ac- activities, um, which I found helps, which were learned at the Udemy Live conference. Um, it's such a simple kind of tip, but sometimes something that you ignore. Um, but yeah, structuring around practical activities um, I find really helps um, and it helps get the course reviews up as well. Got it. Great. I, I like that. And in terms of coming up with a great course topic, yeah. the, a lot of people yeah. are starting out and they like the idea of creating a course and maybe they already know exactly what they want to teach. But sometimes people just think it would be cool to create a course and don't know what they could teach. Do you yeah. have advice for choosing course topics? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's good to look at what you can already teach, uh, but then also look at kind of the market in terms of the competition. Um, If there's already a lot of courses there, can you create a better course? Um, And just kind of look at areas which are not as kind of, let's say, got as many courses in, um, which you could actively teach a course in and build up an audience in that kind of area. Um, So maybe if I started out by teaching an investing course, then moved into Bitcoin, I perhaps would have found it a lot harder to kind of build an audience. But I started off with a Bitcoin course, then moved on to an investing course, which is focused around Bitcoin. Um, and it just it just helps the flow. If you can find, a, kind of find an area which you can kind of go into, which doesn't have as much competition, which I know is kind of hard, um, but it's, it's a good way to kind of do things. Um, but are also you the doing quantity. this on, on Udemy or are you going on other sites to see if there's content for these topics um so yeah i've looked on kind of school share uh, i mean there's not much kind of competition on there um for me uh but i'm still finding it i'm having the same kind of problem i had with udemy at the start where i've got to build up my audience um before i can get a lot of people taking my courses um and i think if you can start if you can create your audience first and then launch kind of an online product or a course or an ebook do it that way because it'll be like you'll have much more kind of let's say straight away success with kind of your course or your ebook as long as it's of good quality and relevant um so yeah if you can build an audience first and then kind of launch a paid or digital product i think that's a good way to go about it rather than launching a product straight away without no audience um so yeah i think, I think that's a good way to go about it building an audience first whether that's for youtube videos starting a blog um or other other ways like instagram accounts i mean a lot of people build followers that way as well yeah, great. So, and were you, did you have any sort of audience when you launched your first course? No, no, no. So that's where, that's where that kind of came from, really. I didn't have any audience. So it's kind of, once the course was published, then I had to think about marketing it and then getting in the students. Rather, if I built up an audience beforehand, um, it would have been so much easier. Um, but yeah, if you could, I didn't have any audience when starting. So it was just kind of talking to people that I knew, seeing if they knew anybody that wanted to buy the course. And it's, it's, it's a, it takes a while. Um, I didn't have kind of the straightaway success with one course. I mean, some people do, but the majority of the people don't. Um, it takes a while to build it up. Um, and it's been, you know, it's building up now, um, which is good. Um, but yeah, it, it does take a while to build up. Um, it doesn't come most for most people anyway, straight away within like the first course. Yeah. And what are you doing right now to build your audience? What's what are you kind of focusing on? OK, so I'm, right now I'm focusing on YouTube and Facebook. Um, so I'm mainly I'm putting a lot of my videos on Facebook and I'm putting a lot on, well, on YouTube as well. Um, but I'm kind of getting more interaction on Facebook than YouTube, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, but yes, yeah, so those are the two kind of main areas. Um, and then I'm leading those people back to kind of 
go back to my website and then sign up to my email list so I can then provide them weekly content, um, which is valuable to them, um, and just kind of get them to understand what I'm doing. So maybe, let's say, in seven weeks' time, once they've kind of signed up to the list, I can say, do you want to enroll on this course for this discounted amount just to get started on learning Bitcoin? Um, so those are the three areas that I think are really important for me. Um, and possibly for other people as well as YouTube, Facebook, and uh, working on my own email list. And on Facebook, are, do you have a page or a group, or is it just your personal um, account? Uh, so I've got a page on there. Um, so it's under B21 Block. Um, so I've got that on there. Um, just posting videos on there once a week. Um, and now I've seen kind of the interaction that I'm getting from people. Um, looking at other ways I can kind of expand that page. Um, initially, I had a group, but it was kind of it was hard to get other people to join because it's a group so you know you won't get as many people joining and liking and just organic reach um so yeah with the page i'm having a lot more success getting people in and interacting with them oh nice nice okay and how are you come is it the same videos that you post on facebook and video and how are uh, on youtube and are you uh how are you coming up with those topics uh, so what i'm doing is actually i'm taking say one or two lectures out of my courses and then putting them on youtube or facebook so it's kind of repurposing my content essentially um, and then putting so put them on both on YouTube and Facebook, but just taking them out of my courses. So one or two lectures and then in the description of the YouTube and uh, Facebook video, I'm saying this video was taken from this kind of course um, and then they can click through and uh, yeah, have a look at it. Smart, smart. So I'm on your website, b21block.com, yeah. which is really pretty. I like it a lot and it's, yeah. it's very simple though. And I think that's... Yeah. That's really important. You got a courses link and events yep. link in your blog. I'm going to click on your events link right now. What What is it this? It does need updating. <laughs> okay. It's, well, it's, it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, it looks like you, you do have a, a webinar. Or you were doing yep. a webinar. Is that something you're you're doing? Yeah. So, so I've been looking a lot into webinars, seeing how to kind of do them properly, essentially. Um, so I've got an audience now that would be interested in a webinar which is the good thing. I've got that audience there, so I can deploy other things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm looking into doing webinars and stuff. So just kind of getting people and teaching them about, not even just charging for them, just teaching them things that they need to know. So setting up a wallet um, and just building that trust um, because no one's gonna give you their hard earned money um, unless they're trusty. I mean, they've worked, they worked hard for their money and they want, they're not, you wouldn't just give your money to anybody. They're gonna give it to someone they trust. So it's all about building that trust and building that trust with your audience rather than just getting a massive list and then just like spamming them every day. Yeah, oh, that's that's what I hear from really everyone I've talked to so far. It's it's all about quantity or quality and not quantity. It's similar yeah. to the course itself. It's you want to make a quality course and you want to have a quality email list, a quality group of followers. Uh, it's better to have a hundred people who love, trust you, and potentially might buy a course than 5,000 or 10,000 people who don't care or don't open up your emails. And on your website, I see that like you have your email opt-in form at the bottom. Are you? What's your process after someone enrolls in your email list? What's the, the email sequence like for them? Okay, so at the moment, um, this is so this is before the website gets updated. Um, people come to the website, um, they can sign up with their email. And what I do then is I get or I get a notification that someone signed up, they get an automatic email sent to them um, saying, Hey, thanks for signing up. Um, if you want 100 bits, which is kind of a small amount of bitcoins, um, feel free to ask me any question you have on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies on the blockchain. Just simply reply with a question and your Bitcoin wallet address. I'll answer the question and I'll send you some Bitcoins. Um, so that's straight away how I can kind of build that rapport with my audience. So they've already interacted directly with me once over kind of just an automated email. Um, and then I send them 100 bits. Um, so nice. it's something they can experiment with. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of, I, I want to try and, yeah, as soon as I sign up, build that rapport with them straight away, um, which I find helps a lot. And how much is that costing you? What's a hundred bits? Um, it's less, it's less than a dollar. It's less than a dollar of Bitcoin. Um, it's a very small amount. It's like, it's, it's, it's like 0 0.00001 of Bitcoin. Um, okay. it's a small amount. Um, but you know, it's, it's still something that people can say, okay, I've got a certain amount of Bitcoins in my wallet um and it's just something for people to get started with 
Yeah, oh, I think that's so cool. Yeah, on your website, you see at the bottom, the opt-in says get get 100 bits sent to your Bitcoin yeah. wallet. And for someone who's brand new to this, and even though it is such a small amount, when yeah. you're brand new to this, you might not know, and it just sounds cool. So I think that's a really cool idea that p- people listening can take away and figure out how to do on their own. Yeah. I love that idea of like asking them to respond to you with a question to just start that conversation and that engagement so you're on udemy and that's where all your courses are and you've created i don't know how many courses now a bunch and how are you promoting those courses when you when you launch them and what have you found most successful uh most successful by any means is kind of uh kind of the in udemy promotional announcements so i kind of look at as my email list so there's like approaching 20,000 students. Okay, it's 20,000 students that it potentially goes out to over the ones that obviously unsubscribe and stuff. Um, so that's kind of the main kind of way that I'm getting students in. Um, after that, it's the email list um, by far. And then kind of social media, I'm still kind of working on optimizing all of that. Um, but something I'm testing a lot more with now is kind of YouTube ads, um, Facebook ads and AdWords in general. Um, it takes a while to kind of, get it all optimized i mean there's so many different things you can change and work with um but once you kind of hit that sweet spot and you understand how it all works um they do work well but it's just about spending that time and that money and finding out what works and what doesn't with the ads and the paid ads um so yeah that's something i'm testing with at the moment okay yeah we'll have to have you on in the future to talk about that once yep. you figure it out i mean it's yep. something that you know you don't want to give away too much about yep. how ads work because then anybody can can do yep. it but it takes someone investing time and energy and it money does. to to learn how to do it and it's something that i haven't really done myself yep. um i think a lot of people just feel weary of giving money or paying to mm. to to make money but it's you know, if you could figure it out, then that's yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> With your course launches and your course pricing, uh, talk to us about that. What are you launching your courses at? What have you found works best for okay. your audience? So it depends on kind of what area. Also, I price my courses competitively. So if there's kind of a competitor who kind of undercuts me, um, I'll kind of price match kind of uh so you know, people sometimes forget it is a competitive marketplace. So you've got to like compete with other courses and stuff. But yeah, course pricing in general, um, I always just try and end with the number of seven just because I think it's better. Um, uh, that's just the way I work. But yeah, normally my courses are kind of $47.97 or $197. But with Udemy, the majority of my sales are between 10 to $19. Um, very, very rarely have a full price sale um but yeah so that's what people need to remember that's kind of a discount marketplace um rather than when people come to the site when they're new to the site um and they want to become instructors um they'll put the course for like 200 dollars, and then they're like how come i'm not seeing any 200 dollar sales um so yeah that's thing one thing people need to be aware of in terms of your realistic goals in terms of the average sale price um but yeah that's my pricing strategy really i look kind of the length of the course what they'll gain from the course. Um, and also with my courses, uh, I give a certain amount of Bitcoin away to the student. So I have to kind of work out, um, because Bitcoin's price shot up recently, I had to send an announcement out saying the amount I'm paying out is changing. Otherwise, I'm paying out like $10 worth of Bitcoin to each student. <laughs> and the average selling price is between 10 to $19. Uh, so that's something as well. But that's for me because I give out a certain amount of Bitcoins to students. Yeah. Oh, man, that's yeah, that's interesting. You got to pay attention to the market. I remember when I first got on Udemy and I was seeing these instructors selling courses for, yeah, like 50, 100, 200 dollars. And they have like 10,000 students and I'm doing the math. I'm like, there's a bunch of millionaires on here. And so when people come to my profile and see over 200,000 students, they start doing the math in their own head they're like okay feels like a billionaire now and yeah. i'm like no 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 no. udemy is a very interesting market a lot of people enroll for free yeah. a lot of people enroll in the classes at yeah. highly discounted rates uh and but it's something that i'm i'm playing around with the idea of putting together yeah. a more premium product and a yeah. bundle on my i have bundles on my own site are you yeah. you you mentioned that and that's something i think a lot of people are interested in do you have any ideas for the bundles? Are you just going to be putting together a bunch of your courses? Or are you also going to be adding other kinds of content okay. or 
bonuses that make it a better experience and more yeah. valuable. Yeah, so uh, one minute quickly, I just got to plug my charger in because the laptop's on 1%. <laughs> yeah. So that's the okay, problem with gonna... the courses all day. <laughs> okay, Rob is going to go plug his laptop in. This is a great time for a little break. Uh, and if you want to go visit Rob's site, go to b21block.com and you can see a really great site and it's got his courses on there, his events and his blogs. And uh, yeah, he's also co-instructing with some other people. Meanwhile, this is a great time to mention you should review this podcast if you haven't. <laughs> Again, okay, Rob is back. I was just telling people to go vis visit your website and to review this podcast. Uh, it would really help us out. <laughs> That's what happens when you're doing screencasts all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And so you're just using a laptop. What laptop do you have? Uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, so I had a, like a Samsung laptop previously. Um, but yeah, it's, like I said, as soon as kind of got more students in and there's demand, um, what better way than to, to reinvest it in kind of better equipment to create better courses? Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we only have a couple questions left, but I did want to ask you about your bundling and any premium products that you, you're you looking to create. you have ideas for those? Yeah. So yeah, like I mentioned with the bundles, um, I'm looking at kind of how to work them. So whether it will be all Bitcoin courses in one bundle, then kind of all blockchain courses in another bundle, or just every single course in one bundle, um, whether that's you pay monthly, whether it's a one-off, it's kind of there's lots of different kind of ways to look at it. But yeah, kind of bundles are the main things I'm looking at at the moment. A um, few other things I'm looking at is kind of audio books. Um, I'm looking at kind of putting the courses on Kindle, Amazon, and um, stuff like that, um, which a lot of people kind of already do. Um, but yeah, just kind of looking at different areas in which you can kind of essentially repurpose the content you've already got, um, but put it somewhere else um, where a new audience can essentially find it. Um, because I mean, there are a lot of students on Udemy, but not everybody uses Udemy. Some people use Skillshare um, and stuff like that. So it's about going out there and finding that audience. Yeah. And are you? do you have any other income streams right now? Are you making any money with your YouTube videos or any other forms of income? Okay. So um, with YouTube ads, um, I've got that turned off. Um, and I've said to myself, once I have 1,000 subscribers, I'll turn it on. So it's kind of a bit of kind of, let's say a bit of a goal to get to 1,000 and then I'll turn it on. Um, so other than kind of online course sales, Udemy, um, my main kind of areas through um, investing in cryptocurrencies, um, which is for more the long term. Um, and especially with kind of the massive rise in Bitcoin's price recently, uh, which is kind of brilliant. Uh, but yeah, so yes, yeah, kind of, that's kind of the second kind of area for me in terms of main revenue streams. Are you investing in anything else besides cryptocurrencies? Um, the, not at the moment. So like, I do kind of invest kind of money away and stuff. Um, but mainly my kind of investments focus around Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, but those are both long term investments. Got it. Got it. Cool. Well, speaking of the long term, where do you envision yourself in in five years from now or three to five years? And what what are the steps and what are you doing to achieve those goals? Good question. Uh, I, I, so, see, I always plan kind of a year. I always do like I go by every year normally. So it's like when you think three to five years in advance, like I have kind of a rough idea. Like I'd love to be like a six figure instructor and earning six figure income online, not just the kind of online course sales, but in general kind of online activities that I'm doing. Um, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, so that's kind of a financial goal. Um, in terms of kind of my online business, because um, there are a few other things that I'd like to do and set up. Um, but then it's also about devoting time to one thing, because um, that's kind of one thing I used to have an issue with before. I used to start one thing and think, I'd like to work on that now. Um, and now, oh, let's work on that now. And then when you look back about like six months later, what did I actually do? Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of really like when I have all these ideas, I just write them down. Um, I just write them in a notepad and just leave them. Um, and then, like, two days after I'll look back and think no now's not the right time to do that um but yeah I'd like to be I'd like in, income wise I'd like to be earning six figures online um and that'll be through a variety of ways such as affiliate affiliate income and stuff like that which I'm looking at implementing nice well you're gonna do it I know it up until Thank now you. do you have any inspirational people you follow blogs podcasts books or anything that you want to share with our listeners that might help them out okay um in terms of um when we were talking about ads, one person's blog I follow is Neil Patel. So obviously he's like a very well-known kind of ads kind of guy marketing. Um, so I'll get a lot of kind of helpful advice from there in terms of AdWords, setting up your campaign, 
Um, so that's kind of the main person I follow for ads. Um, but in terms of general inspiration, it's just kind of the people that we speak to, that I speak to generally, who can have more kind of contact with. So when I'm speaking to you or speaking to any other person in kind of the groups that we have, um, it's kind of gaining inspiration from what they're doing. Um, so that's what I find really helps someone that you can have more contact with over someone that you can't really talk to. Yeah, I love it. And actually, for people listening, uh, Rob and I are in a mastermind group together and we meet, we try to meet every week. We've been better at different times of the year. It's We just got through the holidays, the new year. It's been crazy time, but uh, we we met up at Udemy Live last year and in 2016, and then we kind of got together with our mastermind group. And it's a great way to keep you, you accountable, set goals, and to help each other out because we are kind of siloed away in our own yeah. places. And sometimes it's hard to know if our yeah. ideas are smart or not. So yeah. for people listening, finding a mastermind group has been really beneficial for, for yeah. me, I know. That's the thing I would say, actually, that you mentioned there, you kind of kind of stuck away. So just try and get out at least once a day. Um, because sometimes, I mean, you'll get that kind of, let's say, hurtful reviews on your courses. Uh, some of them will be very helpful. I mean, some say, remove this section, that don't help. But some will just be like, why did you write that? Um, and I remember when I had this background, actually, someone, um, they put a review, uh, thanks for teaching a course in an outside toilet. Um, and it's like... <laughs> Where did that one come from? <laughs> um, so yeah, like I always get, I always get odd reviews sometimes. Uh, so you've just got to understand that there is a world outside. Um, but yeah, you should get, uh, obviously the reviews that are really helpful, take them on board um, and kind of improve your course from it. But there are some that will be just pointless. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And don't you, take them to heart. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great advice. So thank you, Rob, for being on the show. How can people yeah. find you online? Uh, so I'm very soon to be setting up a YouTube channel. Um, so you'll be able to find the links to that on my personal website, which will be at ravindadeal.com. Um, and if you want to learn more about kind of the courses that I'm teaching, feel free to head over to b21block.com. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Rav. I hope you have a great day and we'll have you on in the future when you learn about advertising and you reach six figures. Brilliant. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. There's no better way to learn how to become a better online course creator than heading over to onlinecoursemasters.com and downloading your free seven step guide to success. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show wherever you listen and make sure to leave a rating. If you do, I might even read it on a future show. Help us reach our first 100 ratings. It'll just take an extra minute of your time and help me know how to make this show even better. Thanks and have a beautiful day.